But I'd like to set the stage today just by reflecting on this historic moment and the opportunity it presents for federal leadership to help all communities and jurisdictions in the US take meaningful steps to tackle climate change and to do so in an ambitious and equitable ways. So an important point that uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg made when he kicked off this summer speaker series was that the status quo is not working for many Americans. And as you are likely aware, transportation is also the largest source of US carbon emissions. And we're not doing enough to tackle this pollution, e even though doing so could result in many substantial environmental, economic, and public health benefits. There are also major inequities built into our transportation systems, as I'm sure you're aware. Highways, ports, rail, rail yards that were constructed through or next to low-income communities and communities of color have destroyed neighborhoods, damaged public health uh, with pollution hotspots, and the legacy of those inequities we're, we're still dealing with and will be dealing with for, for years to come. So the urgent need to cut emissions from transportation is really aligned with an opportunity for state climate policies to help reverse environmental injustices, including by prioritizing investments in communities that have both been the most harmed by harmed and underserved by today's transportation systems. Echoing Secretary Buttigieg, if the status quo is not working for many Americans, then the policies needing, needed to achieve our ambitious climate goals and more, more equitable outcomes can't follow business as usual. And it's important that the Biden administration really, I think, recognizes this and recognizes that the federal policy leadership um, that it's undertaking could really mark an important turning point. Secretary Buttigieg argued that we are at the cusp of a transformational moment through policy and investments in infrastructure where equity and job creation can go hand in hand. And I think that's really correct. Biden administration, the Biden administration has promoted legislation, as I'm sure you know, that includes historic investments in rail and transit, establishes safe streets for all, and many more low carbon transportation strategies that could really make a big dent in emissions and, and advance climate justice. For those who aren't familiar, I wanna briefly introduce you to the Georgetown Climate Center. We're based at Georgetown University's Law Center, and we launched in 2009 to support state climate action. We work, work across several climate policy areas, including helping states reduce emissions from the power and transportation sectors. We inform federal policies with the lessons from the states, oftentimes working with and facilitating those state uh, formal comments. And we work across all levels of government um, to increase resilience to the impacts of climate change. What is TCIP? What is the Transportation and Climate Initiative Program and, and, and how will it work? So over the years uh, of our work with jurisdictions in this region, I've come to believe that state leadership is really fundamental and critical for the U.S. to make steady progress in climate and equity. Among other reasons, because state and local and tribal governments are typically where the rubber meets the road, pardon the pun, but in terms of planning and decision making, that ultimately affects how dollars are spent, which infrastructure and energy uh, projects get built. So what's TCI? TCI is a collaboration of state, energy, environment, and transportation agencies in 14 jurisdictions. The 14, of course, you can see on your screen from North Carolina to Maine. All of the jurisdictions in this region have ambitious economy-wide greenhouse gas emission reduction targets. And with transportation accounting for over 40% of carbon emissions across the region, we know that much more needs to be done to cut this pollution. And we know that we need to implement solutions at scale. And so these are the simple facts to help illustrate why TCI is worthwhile. I wanna emphasize that, that public input has been and, and will remain a critical part of TCIP. The jurisdictions we've worked with throughout this process um, have, have invited extensive input and been responsive to that input. Over, over 5,000 submissions have been received to the TCI public input portal. Thousands of participants have attended TCI listening sessions, workshops, and webinars that have been held over the last few years. And we continue to hear, I'm just getting into sort of the substance of what we've heard, beginning in 2018 with the listening sessions, that people want investments in low carbon transportation options. People want affordable, safe, clean alternatives to internal combustion engines and single occupancy vehicles, the, the business as usual, the status quo. People also want reliable source of proceeds that will enable these investments, um, enable investments in clean transportation on an ongoing basis. So many recommended pricing mechanisms like congestion pricing and carbon pricing and several recommended cap and invest by name, which is the approach that TCIP ended up taking. 
So since the listening sessions in 2019, straight through to the present, states have been working hard to develop a multi-state program that reflects public input. So I just wanted to wrap up by suggesting a few areas for the federal government to help build capacity for state and regional climate action. I know states, tribal governments, and cities have, um, and their constituents have, could use better modeling tools and, and data to help develop new programs and monitor progress over time. Um, the Implementation Guidance for Justice 40 initiative that I mentioned, which was recently issued by the White House, illustrates a few areas in which state and federal governments are working in parallel on related issues. And I think more collaboration could be extremely valuable. One example, of course, is the issue with defining disadvantaged communities, identifying appropriate criteria with public input and developing tools that will help with mapping and planning. That's the kind of thing where some more collaboration between federal and state and tribal governments could be helpful. I also think new and more accessible and affordable models are needed to make it easier to evaluate the potential benefits um, of different low carbon transportation strategies. This would really enable, enable a better informed conversations for state and local governments and also for stakeholders to have you know, meaningful participation in the process.